Happy New Year and welcome back to the St. Baldrick's Impact Series. I'm Kathleen Reddy and our guest for our first episode of 2023 is Margaret Boston. Margaret is the volunteer event organizer for Louisiana State University Health Shreveport School of Medicine's Go Bald Head Shaving event. Margaret is a medical student in at LSU's Health Shreveport campus. She's in the class of two 2025 and is now at the helm of this wildly successful 11 year event, which has just surpassed more than half a million dollars raised. Welcome, Margaret. Hi, thank you so much for the welcome and thank you for having me today. We're so glad you're here. We can't wait to jump right in. Margaret, why did LSU Health Shreveport decide to establish a St. Baldrick's event and, and eventually form the Go Bald Club? Uh, well, it's actually a pretty amazing story. It started just over a decade ago uh, with our amazing mentor and founding faculty sponsor, Dr. Jay Marion. He's an internist and specialist in hemonc and palliative care. So as he, he has a close connection already to the St. Baldrick's mission. Um, and we had an aspiring medical student who came to campus and brought the idea for the club to campus. And that student now is a graduated physician. His name is Dr. Taylor Conrad, and he's a pulmonary and critical care specialist also here in Shreveport at LSU Health Shreveport, Oshner. And the rest is history. Um, the school really picked it up. Our students really picked it up. And we've grown from the one signature Shape Day event to a full academic calendar year, full of fun from everything from 5Ks and Christmas parties to gala events and, and karaoke nights. And we've really enjoyed it. And it's I've been very proud as a student now, 10 years down the road to look back and see how it's grown to include not just our medical students, but students across our health campus. We have an allied health campus with PT, PA, OT students that are involved, graduate studies that are involved. And just this year, we were able to recruit a team with LSU AED at the undergraduate in Baton Rouge. So it's definitely grown. <laughs> I would say so. You have a full oper scale operation there. So your event's been really fortunate to have strong um, leadership, a very dedicated team. And that's a bigger challenge as it's comprised of students who tend to eventually graduate and move on. How has GoBall maintained the event's continuity over so many classes of students? And, and really, it's, it's not one event, it's a whole series, as you've said. How have you managed to do that? Uh, well, you're right. The success definitely is that much more impressive when you realize the leadership of the club changes every year and that it is all run by second year medical students. Uh, while the heart of the club has always been fundraising for St. Baldrick's, we really deliver on that mission by predominantly being a social club. Our events are meant to welcome and introduce our new medical and health professional students to our growing campus and showcase our amazing city in Shreveport. So much so that I think attending Go Bald events has really become ingrained in the culture of what it means to be an LSU Health Shreveport student. I know for myself as a first year medical student, it really helped introduce me to the campus and make new friends, and I was from Shreveport, so that was really exciting for me. I also think that's one of the reasons why we do so well to recruit a rising class of leadership, and the structure of medical school itself helps that setup. First and second year of medical school is predominantly clinical, preclinical, lecture-based uh, materials, so we're all roughly on the same schedule. Uh, so it helps that while our second year medical students move on and prepare to take their step exams in the spring, the calendar starts over and we have this rising class of first year medical students to take on these leadership roles after they've just enjoyed a year of activities. So many hands also make light work. Uh, certainly no one person can do this. We have over 300 students in our first and second year classes. And just in the leadership of our club, we have over 40 health professional students who are directly involved with planning events. And we organize them in six different teams with vice presidents who are dedicated to specific tasks like community fundraising and outreach. Um, and we have a wonderful secretary and treasurer, Lacey Melder, who helps keep us all organized, all on schedule for the year. So I definitely think the setup of medical school helps and just having a great group and community of young people who are passionate about what we're doing. So there's multiple wins in this that you've just described between getting to know the LSU Health Shreveport community, getting to know the larger Shreveport community, then making sure there's lots of leadership opportunities for future healthcare professionals so that they can be successful not only in their day job, 
but in all the other ways they support that day job in a healthcare ecosystem. I think it's a brilliant concept and clearly it's been um, very successful by any measurement it has. Um, as we mentioned at the outset, you've surpassed more than $500,000 raised. Congratulations and thanks mm -hmm. again. In that process, besides all the other events that we're gonna hear more about in a moment, but you've also shaved 525 heads at nearly an average of $1,500 per shavy, which has got to be a collegiate record, I think. So twice Go Bald has earned the coveted collegiate title, Battle of the Bald Champions. So with all of that said, please tell us some of your secrets that can help other schools looking to do what you've done. <laughs> oh, well, um, there, there's no secrets. It's all, I feel like, things people have said before, but for one, definitely be organized and start early. Um, you don't have to be a medical student to be organized. We actually work off of a Google Drive that anyone can make and have access to uh, that's been passed down and added to by each leadership group every year with new ideas about what worked and what didn't, mm -hmm. with historical contacts and old poster ideas that we are able to pull from and jump off of every single year when we start again. Um, also plan around things you know might interfere with your events. For us as students, that looks like planning around exam schedules and LSU home football games, because go Tigers. <laughs> and, and not putting anything over long breaks where you know students and family are really gonna go home and, and, and see their family and friends and maybe have other obligations. Um, we also rarely throw anything away. We keep a couple storage bins. Uh, it's part of the go bald tradition is that they get passed down into the next person's garage. Um, and we find every year that we're able to reuse things from old events and add from new events. And you'd be surprised that how long some of those bigger events can take when we do plan them out, out far away. And having that, those storage bins and that, that backlog of, of, ideas and things that we can pull from and use from and build on really sets us up to start well. And then we just backfill the things that we still need. Um, for example, in terms of planning far ahead, our first calendar event last year, I don't think was until late August, but we were already planning as a leadership group. Uh, there's about seven of us who kind of plan everything. Uh, we planned out what we wanted our whole year to look like in May of last year where we said, we want this event in this month and this event in this month. And we hope to have this much raised to cover these costs by this time. So that definitely helped. Um, and then our first ever gala event this past November, we took over seven months to really iron out the details and raise the sponsorships needed to make it the elegant, fun fundraising night that it became. And I'm so very proud of how it turned out. So that'd be the first. <laughs> It, incredibly impressive. Um, so as you've you've touched upon, your head shaving event is actually the culmination of many of your activities that happen year round. Um, why did you create all those others and what process did you go through to figure out what were the right projects to take on? Yeah, absolutely. Well, we definitely benefit from that decade of history that we have as a club of already having some events that we had seen as participants, as first year medical students. So looking back from a leadership perspective, a lot of it was, well, what did we enjoy when we first came to campus participating in and what worked well and drew us as students to go bald as a club and to participate. So many of our events have been here for a very long time, launch party, different kickbacks and give backs. Um, this, these are pictures of our launch party this past year that we had. Med students love an excuse to get together and, and network over, over, over a pint or something. So we have a local uh, brewery, Great Raft Brew Pub, who works with us on many of our events. And we've been so fortunate to have those kinds of local Shreveport connections who really help spur on our cause and, and give us a fun space to be. So the launch party has always been a staple event where we welcome our new students who come in August of each year, medical students, to their new campus. As second year medical students, we've already been here for a few months, already been here for a year. Um, and that's our opportunity to really introduce what Go Bald is as a mission and as a social club and introduce them to our next events. My favorite and newest event and probably our biggest event was our Go Bald Gala this year. Um, 
this was the first ever time we'd, we'd thrown this event, the first annual Cobalt Gala, and it was the brainchild of one of our vice presidents of fundraising events, a friend of mine, Raymond Oler. He had pitched it at our very first Go Ball meeting together as VPs last May, and he definitely put his own blood, sweat, and tears into making it a reality from going into offices face-to-face -face and filling out countless applications for sponsors and leading with a vision of what he wanted the night to look like aesthetically and culminating in honoring our lifetime and founding faculty sponsor, Dr. Marion, for his lifetime of service to not only our club, but the greater Shreveport area and our medical students as a mentor. He wrote a, wrote a heartwarming speech um, honoring his, his commitment to, to those causes. So I will say that while that was his brainchild, he really set the tone of the energy and the commitment that the rest of the group could bring to the table and our medical students delivered. To shout out some specific people, one of our students, Jay Manuel, uh, collected over a couple thousand dollars worth of merchandise that we could sell at our silent auction to help raise money. We have two phenomenal decorations chairs. They are also second year medical students. Uh, their names are Abigail Abercrombie and Lillian Locke. And you can see how beautifully the, the event turned out with marquee letters and balloon arches and beautiful table centerpieces. We didn't hire a decorations company. Our two medical student girls meticulously planned those decorations from start to finish and recruited friends and family who are wedding event planners and florists to donate their time and tools and the resources necessary to come together and make those kinds of things so that we could maximize our fundraising profits. I also have to give a shout out to all of the medical students who showed up the day of to decorate the whole event venue from nine in the morning to when the event started at 7 p.m. and just look at how it turned out. I mean, we had people show up with with spouses, friends, boyfriends, people on ladders, putting up lights, tying up balloon arches. It was really a school-wide um, effort and we enjoyed then celebrating the success of the night by the end. So we also had another, oh, go ahead, I'm sorry. I was just gonna say, it sounds incredible and a, a phenomenal team effort tapping everybody's creative talents. Yes, yes, we're very proud of the, the students that showed up that day. <laughs> Um, we also have another event, a tennis mixer, all right, and a Christmas party. Here's, here's the tennis mixer. Um, so the tennis mixer was actually started last year by last year's leadership group and really ties in two different clubs on campus. One of the amazing things about our healthcare campus is that everybody's really inclusive and involved. And so it was our school's tennis club that reached out and said, hey, we want to throw a tennis mixer and we'd like to benefit and support Go Bald and St. Baldrick's. Is that something y'all want to do? And they got it together. So this year was our second time doing it and it's actually grown we added a pickleball tournament to it because we have a new pickleball club on campus um so it's exciting to see how the students tie in all of their other interests and activities for this one cause um and i love that you're keeping up with the current trends and um yeah. pickleball sweeping the nation so <laughs> seize the day for that too absolutely <laughs> very good so what other advice would you offer, Margaret, to other volunteer event organizers who might be listening? Um, I would say create spaces where people can brainstorm and talk. Um, people will come to you with their ideas, concerns, and questions, and never underestimate the power of all being in the same room, especially when you can speak freely. Uh, I think that's one thing. We're, we're all very opinionated and outspoken as medical students. We have no problem sharing our thoughts. Um, and I think some of our best memories and best ideas happened when we were all together in one room, just throwing things at the wall and seeing what would stick. So definitely as well, make it a part of your mission to be inclusive and build friendships and relationships. And the work of throwing the events will do, will do itself. There's no role too big, no role too small and, and no idea too big that if you're willing to get in together and enjoy organizing the event, uh, you can make it happen. Words of wisdom, for sure. <laughs> Finally, and probably most important, you're all doing this to ensure kids with cancer live the healthy futures each deserve. What hopes and goals does Go Bald have for kids with cancer this year? Well, at the end of the day, we hope all the money and awareness we raise for those kids will contribute to real and lasting change in their lives. Uh, when we get together, we do have fun planning and hosting our events. But when asked about why we organize, we all respond with some version of 
it's for the kids. Um, to steal some of Bray's comments at our gala during his speech last November, we hope we can help families trade chemo and surgery for sports practices and dance recitals. Some of our own Go Bald members are actually past and present our childhood cancer survivors. So I can only hope that as the years go by and we have more thriving survivors than angels because of the impact our group has had today. And that right there is the St. Baldrick's mission in a nutshell. So well said, Margaret, and thank you for being here today and to every member of the LSU Health Shreveport and Go Bald team for helping give kids a lifetime. And I think given their many contributions that you've detailed so eloquently today, let's give some of your leaders a quick shout out. You've shared with us um, Shanti Tanga, Abigail Castine, Crystal Morton, Raymond Oler, Kelly Broussard, Aaron Mayu, Lacey Melder, and of course, Dr. J. Marion, and so many others. Um, the danger of listing names is you start to forget people, be, but you've been blessed with a really talented and deep bench, and the results show it. And of course, it takes great leaders to create that. So thank you for being that great leader, Margaret. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. And thanks to all of you, our loyal audience, for sharing this episode on your social channels. Remember, research is hope, and you can create that hope. Visit us at stbaldrix.org to learn how. Happy New Year.